Welcome back. A rezoning application has been put to the City of Vancouver for a three-story development at the mouth of the Burrard Street Bridge in downtown Vancouver. Sam Numson has this story. It's going to be big, environmentally friendly, and if the developers are successful, the Burrard Gateway will be a major change to Vancouver's skyline. Envisioned is a building with a strong emphasis on supporting the improvement of the skyline and a strong connection to the Burrard Bridge as you come over the Burrard Bridge and enter the western end of the downtown core. The Burrard Gateway site will be a very prominent and stunning architectural statement on that skyline. The half-billion dollar project would sit between Burrard and Hornby along Drake. The tallest tower at 48 stories conflicts with the city's view protection guidelines. But the gateway is one of six projects council says has potentially earned a height that exceeds city policy. Uh, earned height over that uh, can provide uh, architectural excellence, environmental sustainability and, and, and additional community amenities such as the daycare and the gallery and the heritage density transfer, the rental units. So really, it's an earned proposition, and uh, you have to demonstrate that it's, uh, it's achievable. The project mixes strata and rental housing with office and retail space. The three structures will serve as an impressive site for people entering the city. The redevelopment of this corner offers a rare opportunity to create an architecturally significant development that will make a lasting contribution for the way that visitors and residents experience the city. Public hearings on the rezoning are set to begin at City Council next spring. Now the plan will need to be reviewed by a tall building design team made up of internationally renowned architects. If all goes smoothly, the building could begin construction as early as next year. Sam Numson in Vancouver for BCIT Magazine. The Vancouver School Board may close Champlain Heights Annex to help save $175,000 a year. As Jeremy Bosch found out, Parents are doing everything they can to, get th to keep their school from being put on the chopping block. It's the end of the day at Champlain Heights Annex, or what people in the neighborhood call the Little Red Schoolhouse. And these K-3 students don't want to see it closed down. I really like all the spear days here. And I don't want um, it to, I don't want to close down the school because she won't be able to go here. And the people in the community would have a chance to voice their opinion that evening at a very emotional public review meeting with the Vancouver School Board. Why we are having, we are facing this situation? We have to change our system. Go to the government. Go to the provincial government, you elected people. Go and ask our demand. Ask for it and establish it. And don't close our family place. Please don't close our family place. That's my request to you. Thank you very much. The kids were taking notes, and so was the VSB. They say a $17 million deficit is to blame. We've been through a round of budget cuts beyond what I thought were even possible in this district. Going into this closure process is, is something that none of us expected coming into this, this role. I can tell you that no one runs for the role of school trustee to come out to communities and talk to them about closing their schools. Champlain Heights Annex is one of five schools slated for closure. This from an original list of 11. Now, this is just the public review process. A formal decision on any of the school closures will be made in early December. Jeremy Bosch in Vancouver for BCIT Magazine. The Abbey Field Burnaby is a unique seniors home based on independent living and family style dynamic. But as Ellie Short reports, its doors may soon be closing. Forget Thelma and Louise. Thelma and Elizabeth are quite the pair. They met while living in the Abbeyfield Burnaby, a place they truly call home. It's like a home away from home. In the bigger places, you know, you're just a number. While independently run, Abbeyfield Burnaby is part of a larger network of small-scale cooperative senior homes that began in England over 50 years ago. Who's but the unique and intimate style of the Abbey Field is the very reason why its doors may close. Without recognition from the government as a traditional retirement centre, this senior's home must rely solely on the rent of its residents to keep it going. We don't want to tell them how old you are though, do we? <laughs> 59. Okay, all right, we're going backwards now. Since learning of the bad news, resident coordinator Colleen Saunders has been working tirelessly to raise funds. To her, the Abbey Field means so much that she is prepared to offer $1,000 of her own money if enough people pledge. 
Um, living here is about being independent, making decisions for yourself, and choosing what, what you choose to do with your day and your life. Too slippy and too wet. Colleen feels that independence is empowering for the residents, and what's been even more empowering is simply the fight to keep their home. None of us here are afraid or feeling fearful. We're actually feeling probably more empowered than we ever have in the last, like, you know, in the last while. And Louise, she's the youngest one. They may feel empowered, but for residents like Thelma and Elizabeth, the future of their unique home is still on the line. It's not easy giving up your own home. Ellie Short in Burnaby for BCIT Magazine. Hi, I'm Keenan Kip, and this is what's happening in rainy Vancouver. If you're looking for a good scare, head to Fright Nights at the PNE. It's open 6 p.m. till late, so you can try the roller coaster in the dark or even some of the horrifying haunted houses. But it's only around till Halloween, so make sure you get there before the ghosts and goblins disappear. Feel like you need to work off all the candy and chocolate you've eaten in the last week? Well, you're in luck. Bike to Work Week starts on the 1st and goes through to the 7th. With lots of great prizes to win, you'll help the environment along the way. Go to the website www.biketoworkmetrovan.ca for more information. November 3rd marks the start of Vancouver Fashion Week. With designers coming from around the world, it's a great way to get inspiration for your wardrobe. Shows run daily with eco-friendly collections showing on November 5th. For more information, check out the website vanfashionweek.com. I'm Keenan Kip, and that's your community calendar. Alex Burroughs is coming back to the Canucks. And we'll check out the latest fitness craze in Yaletown.